What's up, everybody? And welcome back to your favorite hour of the week, the best podcast in the world. This is the Anything Better podcast with myself, Paul Mersey, Bill Burr, producer Greek Freak, behind the glass, even though he's not behind the glass. He's in California. Uh, you guys are listening to episode 28. And uh, before we get into 28, I just wanted to, Bill, you don't even know this. Um, the amount of people, I don't know what it was about 27 or if it was people catching up, the amount of people that have reached out to social media and everywhere saying that the Anything Better podcast is now the king, in their opinion. One of the best podcasts <laughs> in all of um, your rating and reviews. We really, really appreciate it. It keeps the show moving forward and moving to the top where it fucking belongs. So get it anywhere you get your podcast, Spotify, iTunes, everything. Now, Bill, I know you got a 28 queued up for me. So who who is the top 28 for this? Episode? Can I explain the red mark on my forehead first? Please do, because we were. that's the elephant in the room. Um, all right. I, I was playing with my son and I was making him laugh and I was laying down and my daughter wanted to get involved. So she tried to put her face over my face and yell and she had her mouth open. And as I picked my head up to surprise my son, I caught her teeth Oof. right in my forehead. Oh, blood, the whole thing. And she's like, Dad, I hurt my teeth. Oh. <laughs> I got to go on stage. I've been putting put neosporin on it, Paul, with a paint roller, my friggin' forehead so damn big. Like, I needed to call attention to my forehead. So I finally have good lighting. <laughs> I'm out here in Massachusetts. I'm doing the benefit tonight for the late, great Wayne Previty down there at, um, at the, uh, the Wiltern. What's awesome, dude, is I actually reached out to a bunch of comics. You know, I stayed in touch with some of them I hadn't talked to in a while, and I basically booked a show that I did like 30 years ago, almost at the 99s in Bel Rico. So I had John David hosting. We got Todd Parker, um, Dan Smith, myself, a whole bunch of guys, uh, Jack Lynch, all of these guys that I started out with. So it's going to be a uh, big, you know, instead of just being sad, it's also going to be a reunion. And then I got a boatload of Chinese food afterwards with Massachusetts, uh -oh. by the way, Paul, Massachusetts best Chinese food other than if you're in China. That's what I, that's what I hear, man. That's what I hear. And I got to tell you when I did that Kowloon and I did a, a show there and then we went into the restaurant and ate, it was pretty fucking good. So, oh, yeah. um, no, I mean, they're trying to kill you with what they're doing compared to what they feed each other. Cause you know, you look in China, they're all in shape. You look at Americans, we eat Chinese food with fat fucks. So something's going on there. I think it's a very, it's a cool, it's one of the nicest attacks on a country ever right um all right steve okay the greatest 28s ever paul i was trying to think of a 28 that's a, we're in the weird numbers right now dude like 27 when i think 27 last week i i think mike crucial niski don't we all all right number 28 the best 28s the best guys to wear the number 28 in sports of all time number 14 steve Lama won the Stanley Cup with the New York Rangers. He's not 150, so you know he didn't win it in 1940. He won it in 1994. Um, Vita Blue. There's a great one. Wow. Vita Blue, three-time three -time world champion with the Oakland A's before that tight bastard wouldn't pay everybody, and they all left. Half of them ended up on the Yankees, and you fucking assholes won two with the Oakland A's. Uh, Fred Taylor, Paul. I know you like him. I love Freddie T. We met him. Yeah. You, you spotted him. We were in a hotel in uh, Jacksonville. Yeah. Chris we Johnson. Three-time Pro Bowler. Uh, NFL run, uh, running back. Titans, Jets, Arizona Cardinals. Duke Schneider. Willie Mickey and the Duke. That's a good one. That is a good, real good one. Daryl Green. That's a great one. Oh, That's man, I would have had that guy higher up than number nine. That guy's a great one. The guy could run like a 440 when he was like Tom Brady's age right now. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, God. Oh. What? Paul, the guy who caught the final out for the Red Sox in 1978. Carl Yastrzemski, check swing, popped it up to third base. 
Not not Greg Nettles. Greg Nettles. Whoa. There you go. Wow, that was a good one. Oh, here's a great one. I should have known this as a Patriots fan. Curtis Martin. That's a great one. My favorite, one. Martin. That's a great one. Um, Darren Woodson. That's a great one. That's another great one. A lot of good 28s. Number five, Buster Posey. Okay. Six-time All-Star, three times World Series champion. I mean, I don't know. Buster Posey, does that roll off a lot of sports fans' tongues? I don't know. Ah. Oh. One of my favorites of all time. Paul, are you into condiments? <laughs> you like ketchup? You like relish? You like mayonnaise? I'm a mayo guy now. I've, I've, mayo? Grown old, I've, I've turned into mayo, yeah. Well, this, this guy liked condiments so much they were all over the front of his baseball jersey. Gaylord Perry. Oh, uh, okay. King of the knuckleball and uh, Jesus Christ. He could have started his own fast food joint with what was on his hat and his shirt. Back when you could do stuff like that, it was funny. Oh, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Number three, Marshall Falk. Wow, how did we forget that one? 28's a number that just doesn't stay with you. Adrian it's, Peterson. It's, you sleep on it. You sleep on it. It's a it's an underrated number. It really is. And what is that? Is that the second or third great running back? I think That's Chad Curtis. Remember Chad Curtis, the left fielder for the Yankees with the fucking crew cut? The fucking, he was 28, I think. Then I think he got in trouble with the law. All right, we're going international on number one. Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, okay, well. Even Americans know Ronaldo, right? All the chicks loved him. Like, he's so big that even if you don't know soccer, you're like, oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> He's like, even bigger than that Beckham guy because until they made the movie uh, Bend Him Like Beckham, I was like, who? And then I forgot his name, and then he started dating that Spice Girl. Yeah. Posh Spike. Spice. Vic victorious? I don't fucking know. Um, Posh Spice. Yeah. Just victorious. oddly does not age. No. Sitting there like a little... Uh, I don't know what. Just sitting in like a test tube. I think they, they people like that, they sleep in like a fucking... That Michael you, Jackson bed, right? But then, you know, he ended up dying. Did you know Michael Jackson died? <laughs> yeah, rest <laughs> I don't know what part of the internet you're on, but he died. Yo. All right. Greatest aging process for anybody that's big. I got to tell you something right now, dude. Take a look at John fucking Stamos, dude. John Stamos, oh. John Stamos might look better now than he. I mean, John Stamos. He does. He, he does because he, he looks like a man. When he was on Full House, he looked like a punk. Dude, he's like super thin. Probably Andrew, can you look up his age? My guess is going to be my guess is going to be fifty six. That's going to be my guess. I'm going to. Dude, he might be sixty. Dude, how old? Lower. Fifty seven. Whoa, 57, okay. dude, that's that. Dude, Greeks? Paul, if you kept your hair. <laughs> you kept your hair, Paul? Oh, my God. Dude, that Paul guy. Paul Bersey with hair and that Greek blood. Forget it, dude. You look great for centuries. Dude, that kid looks like he's thin. He looks like he could fight at, like, 140. He's just, I mean, that guy is in some serious. He's in better shape than he was back then, and he looks better. I went to something one time for Bob Saget, and he did the show with John Stamos, and John Stamos showed up there. It was, like, ridiculous. No, he's – I'll tell you another one who's aging fantastic. Sandra Bullock looks like she used – I mean, she's another one. Rob Lowe. Oh, my God. Rob Lowe's a great – Rob Lowe is the not Greek John Stamos. You know what's funny? When I search John Stamos' age, it says people also search for Bob Saget, obviously, and Rob Lowe, 57 years old as well. Wow. Dude, dude Rob look at Andrew Demolis. No, you wouldn't know he was 48. Another Greek guy. <laughs> look how well he's aging. 38. I don't, dude, 38, you look ridiculous. What about um, any athletes that were two years out of college? <laughs> what about any athletes, Bill, that still look good? What athletes? Hey, what about me, Paul? They could There's still a play. fucking 53-year-old ginger. I mean, we do not. We, li <laughs> we look like lobster fishermen by the time we're 41. I'm doing all right, man. I'm standing other than the fact I got teeth mark in my forehead. 
Yeah, and guys like you. Sun. Yeah, guys, you do. You got your skin for for a guy who's white like you. Your skin, you don't. Some guys have fucking blotches. You know shingles. what it is, dude? It's because white people. I like, did a bit on it. White people, you know. You got to hang out with black people that teach you about lotion. All of that shit, black don't crack, is bullshit. They take care of themselves. They, you got me they, into lotion. They, they mo helpful. moisturize. Oh, Paul, is a Greek with your olive skin? If you're going to moisturize, dude, there's no... See, Paul Verzi is going to run on the Republican ticket in fucking 2048. Uh, speaking of Republican... Some sort of local... You're going to make something great again, Paul. You know, I, I just want to say something. I just want to say something, okay? I resent the fact... Now, you guys know we don't get political on anything better. That's not what we do. We're a fun show. We talk some sports. We talk a little shit. But I take a little exception, and I'm a little... I, I don't like that that the former governor, Cuomo, who had to resign because he got a little happy hands there. I don't like... He didn't get happy. He said he's Italian. That's what I don't like, okay? <laughs> Listen to me. He said, you come can't over here, yo, come over here. You can't put in the same <laughs> sentence, I'm not a perv, I'm just Italian, and think that that's going to fly with me. Okay, listen, yes, we're affectionate people. <laughs> Bill, I see you. Listen, Bill, when I come to California, you come to New York, and I see you, what do I do? I you feel you me up. I it gets uncomfortable. No, but then I, I think to myself, wait a minute. No, no. He's I Italian. You, I give you a pound. I give you a hug. That's what we do. We get a little drunk. You know, you kiss on the head. Dude, I get that. But to say that he's Italian, so that's why he's not a perv and he's groping people, man, I don't like it. Okay? Paul, he took your people down with him. Yes, he did. He used us. He used our love and affection. He used our good souls. He used the fact that we like to embrace and say, I love you. And he fucking tried dragging it down with his scumbag actions. And I take exception to it. Paul, isn't it enough that every fucking story that has Italians involved in it from Hollywood for a good 50 years had you guys as bookies, gangsters, just scumbags, dumb. Yes. Peacocks. Sweatsuits, gold yeah. chains. Well, I mean, that's, that's that's up for debate. I mean, don't bring jewelry into it. It's just our culture. But well, us fair skin, we're just jealous we can't pull it up. All right. <laughs> so you already got that going. I'm not a perv. He literally said, I'm not a perv. And I'm now he out. introduced. Oh, you think God. Hollywood right now isn't going to try to reboot Goodfellas with a bunch of just a bunch of perverts? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got him right where we want him. Takes uh, on a whole new connotation. I have never, he said, I have never touched anybody inappropriately. And then when he resigned, he goes, I take responsibility for my actions. <laughs> Dude, when he said he never touched anybody inappropriately, it sounded like you talking about how I have never driven over any bridge to get into Manhattan. I take the Henry Hudson Highway. Uh, Mr. President, you would go over the Henry Hudson oh. Bridge, which is at least a quarter of a mile in the air. Oh, my God, dude. That's what great. I meant was no significant bridge. <laughs> what is a significant bridge? It's one of my, Paul, I cannot even begin to tell you how many people have brought that clip up. Oh, no, it's, I know, I know. I, dude, Bobby Kelly was driving to the city and made a video and sent it to me. And as he's going over the bridge, he's going, Berzy, you see this? You see that one? It's a fucking bridge. Oh, it's you pay a, you pay a toll. No, uh, yeah. Pretty but, significant. But, yes. I was wrong, but what I was trying to say was there's no major there's no major bridge or tunnel the way that I go as far as a George Washington or the Throg's Neck or the Lincoln Tunnel. I go over this. It's a little it's a little insignificant bridge that I don't but I was wrong. Well, if you you could like leap to your death at least four times off that bridge, <laughs> like if they went like this is high enough. OK, keep going. This is high enough. That thing is is unsettling, unsettlingly high. You look down on uh, the, the projects. If I remember, I'm sure now they're all glass towers. Bill, Bill, I am not a pervert. I'm Italian.
Put your hands up. I can't see you. You're fading away again. I don't know. Uh, we got to get you a new camera, Paul. No, it's By the way, I... we know it's really echoey in here. I, you know, I don't want to tell you. I'm on vacation with the, uh, with the family, and uh, I'm up in the attic, dude. I got to tell you, man. Like, I'm fucking staying in this, you know, one of these houses. They just redid everything fucking nice, you know. I'm right on the fucking water, and it's just like, I swear to God, Paul. Like that. Like that, you'd never see me again. I just do local shows. I come right back. I'm Ernie Buck. Come on down. And I'd act like I bought a car. I just do a couple of local. Left on Spitbrook, right on Daniel Webster. I would fucking move back here. There's in a something second. about there's something about you on the East Coast. I see it in your face. You always got a little pep in your step when you're over the side. You always there's something. You always look like you're ready for the road game. I, you know, I know what you want. You want me to move right down the street from you and open our cigar bar slash liquor store slash barber shop. Well, that's part of it. Remember in uh, uh, remember in slash Abraham? horse track. What else? What else do we got? Remember slash remember yachting a, club. Remember in a Bronx Tale. He goes, "You want to know why Joe D was the greatest?" And he goes, "Cause he was Italian dad." De Niro goes, well, "That's part of it." <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, dude, yeah, I'm telling you, man, I'm walking 60, 65 tops, dude. That means 18. I may have 18 more years in this business as far as like touring, doing all that shit, dude. Maybe 65. I'm fucking out, dude. I'm going to be sitting in a, on a mountain somewhere just fucking staring, staring at something with a stick. Give a fuck. On a mountain? Somewhere How about your high. backyard, Paul? I'm somewhere high. No, I know. I mean, I'm on a mountain. I'm on a mountain on a hill. Why well, give a fuck? Dude, speaking of that, did you see that fucking drunk guy? Because that just reminded me of oh. uh, of uh, Ric Flair. Dude, that, oh that fucking, that guy, that drunk guy who was yelling at people saying his grandparents had $2 million on the oh, flight and they had, to duct, they had to duct tape him. He was groping yeah. like flight attendants. If you listen to that rant, it sounds like, like drunk Ric Flair. Yeah. He's almost saying yeah. the same shit. I was just waiting for him to be like, big lights. Pretty ladies. <laughs> Grandparents got two million dollars. I inherited two million dollars. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not saying they shouldn't have done it, but when they were duct taping them, it kind of creeped me out. It reminded me of like a horror movie when like the village turns on the witch. Like it, it started to become me. like saw a little it's, bit. It started to fucking when he was just sitting there motionless. And they're just doing it literally reminded me of like those horror movies where they were like, get the witch. She's wicked. And like they're hanging her like it fucked me up. The fact that they have that on the plane, because when somebody wigs out at fucking thirty five thousand feet, you can't pull over to the side of the road. Dude, you know, it would be amazing if they had the fucking if they had an ejection seat for somebody like that, almost like a Duncan stool. And they just they duct tape you to it. All right, we'll take the vote from first class first. All in favor, say aye. <laughs> Come on, man, don't do me like this. I got, I got 12,000 free for five miles in this. Ah. Sorry, buddy. At least oh. wait till I'm over the Rockies. <laughs> Have a heart. And they just, <laughs> just send you right out. Dude, they did, did they duct tape his mouth and then pull it down? Like, that was fucked up, dude. Paul, he was groping stewardesses. Can't you tra tranquilize him or zap him or something? No, because what if a guy like that gets hold of it? Right, I guess. Shoots the pilot on his foot, right in his artery, right in the inside of his leg. He yeah. falls on the yoke. All of a sudden, you start going down. Then everybody slides up to the front. You can't open the cockpit door for that one passenger, 57, that knows how to fly the plane. Dude, duct taping somebody to a seat with their mouth shut is one of the most wild things I've seen American citizens do, dude. Oh, it looked like narcos. It was I was waiting for to take the car battery out or some shit. Yeah, like the only thing was they didn't put a gun to his head, just fucking blow his head off in a plastic bag. That was fucking nuts. The only, the only good thing that came out of that is someday when somebody goes, dude, what is the drunkest you've ever been? And oh, I got a story. I got a story too. Well, you should probably go first because, <laughs> dude, that kid's grand. That guy's grandkid. Mine involves sex, three counts of sexual assault and some saran wrap. <laughs> dude, he wasn't groping. Pied Piedmont Airlines. He wasn't groping flight attendants. He's Italian. Oh, that's right. He was. <laughs> <laughs> 
He was the kid's Italian. Uh, uh, I mean, Paul, how far have your people fallen that there hasn't been a hit put out on it? How is this guy still walking the streets? First, that rainbow color rapper is still getting to walk around, and now this? <laughs> I was thinking about what you think Cuomo was doing at home last night. Do you think he sat down after he resigned? He just poured a drink. He's staring out the window going, like, that went, <laughs> that didn't end well. <laughs> hey, you know, she had nice tits. What, what, what do you want from me? What was I supposed to do? You come walking in, they're, they're at me. It was, it was more of a defensive move. Oh, shit. Like, you know, he lies to himself. Dude, oh. she came at me. Oh. Okay? I was, seat, I was sitting there, right? And a little gobble, whoop, you know? Twisted it up on the spoon like a gentleman. She comes in with the fucking, what's an old school world for tatas? What would an old school guy say? Her honkers? Uh, These headlamps blinded my eyes. Oh, she had, she had uh, it's a funny one. Oh, she had what a pair of What are you, you came up from behind her? Well, I mean, you know, yes, I did. But, you know, before she turned around, she was facing me. I never want to judge a book, okay? I never want to judge a book, all right? But that guy's face just says, I did it. I mean, listen, dude, if that guy's face doesn't say I fucking groped her, I don't know what face would. His face is somewhere between a sleazy car salesman and a game show host who needs to tone it down. A hundred percent. Like, you know. An old school game show host that would kiss all the women like Richard Dawson. Some people just look what they are. You know, Eli Manning, his face was always the oh shucks guy. And that's exactly what he is. OK, mm -hmm. you ever look, you know, you ever see an older Irish guy like 70 with the red nose? You're like, OK, that guy is a drunk, angry man. That's it, it's what it is. Cuomo just said slicked hair, governor of New York accusations you never want to say they're true but in gun to my head did he touch an ass or two probably <laughs> probably <laughs> uh andrew were you gonna say something you look like a sleazy rick patino and i don't want to hear anybody say that rick patino is sleazy he wasn't he was playing the game dude i'm not talking about the bullshit he did off the court i'm just saying on the court i mean it's a, it's a filthy game Dude, a sleazy Patino is perfect. It's perfect for him because it's like he did have people that he led and liked him, but then he also had that shit. Um, not that Patino did. Andrew, what were you going to say, dude? Uh, another story just came out today. A 13-year-old boy was duct taped to his seat on a plane. Uh, a young man was duct taped to his seat after he went mental and tried to kick out the window of an American Airlines flight from Maui to Los Angeles. A uh, 13 year old boy tried to kick out the window next to his seat and became physical towards his mother uh, an hour into the flight. The flight was diverted to Honolulu. Okay, so they, they should have duct taped him down and their parents because that's bad parenting. <laughs> yeah. Who? Who for the airline is going to Home Depot getting those rolls of duct tape before the flight? <laughs> I just love that they have them. Dude, I know a guy that was on a flight back in the day before people really were flipping out. Oh, they paid attention to him. Like the two guys, two probably fat guys, they took their belts off and they just tied him around one there and then like his hands like two, two times around. <laughs> Just put this guy down on the ground. The comedian. I forget who told me that story a long time ago. Dude, that's wild. All right, you guys load the drinks. Get the ice. Okay, Tim, go to Home Depot. I want three rolls of the strongest duct tape they got. We got to keep that. I mean, the fact that that's on the They plane. should just put retired UFC guys because they could just come up and just choke them out. It's better for the environment. You don't got to waste all that money with the duct tape. I like that. Uh, uh, a UFC air marshal that just yeah. comes up and just puts you to sleep, put you to sleep, and that's it. Yeah. You going to keep talking, sir, or are we going to get cauliflowered ears? Oh, what do you dude. want? I, I, Bill, you just, I'm telling you, you can't see it from my perspective. Andrew, Bill's just, Bill's just got the East Coast swag right now. If Bill was going into a fight, all my money on him. All my money on him right all now. You could tell me three weeks from now what punch you were going to throw, and you'd still hit me with it. <laughs> My fucking head is the size of a globe 
I do not have quick twitch. I, I am like, I am a text cob style fighter. I'm right, trying to one. walk through what you're throwing at me with, with but I don't have a, a strong chin like Tex Cobb. I like there, there, there's none of this in my game. It was just move forward, get it to the ground. Could you, could you on your best day go into an octagon versus a UFC fighter that's not great? Let's say the UFC fighter is 500. This is the dumbest question. No. No, 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 no. You didn't let me, I, you didn't, you got it. Let me hear. It's a good question. It's a good question. So the guy's like 12 and 12, might be on his way out. Could you go in there and last 30 seconds? No. You get to run around. I'm not turning my back and running away. The clock hits. You got to just get through 30 seconds. You'd probably get to 15, 20 if you ran. No? No. And what does he stand to win if he knocks me out before? Or she? Or Here's they, Paul? Let's try to be progressive. Well, yeah, we don't know what they, we don't know what they, what's what they identify as. as. Yeah, what they identify as. What are they, what's their reward? Um, I don't know. Yours is more. So their reward would be. No, no, more. I want to know what their motivation is. Um, Dude, for a title shot, they take my fucking head off. Dude, one of those leg kicks. You ever get kicked in the shin? That's it. I'm done. I'm on the couch holding my shin. I know, but listen, man, if you're strategic, 30 seconds is something that could be possibly achieved if you're small. Well, you're the kind of guy that watched the Olympics for about six hours and you start to think that you, could, if you put your mind to it, you could compete. And that's not positive thought, all right? That's, you're delusional. That's why I'm a winner, Bill. You know, no, I won too. Look at me. I'm in the attic of a fucking house right now. You know, <laughs> you know how long it took me to get to this attic? <laughs> Paul, uh, you are disrespecting professional fighters on I'm all levels the way Mario Cuomo disrespected you perverted Italians. You perverted, dishonest, mobbed up Italians. <laughs> He me, added another one, Paul, like you needed one. Look, at you hit me with the Irish thing. I let you get away with it, with this red nose. How could he just be some happy old Irish guy who likes Christmas? He had to be a drunk, <laughs> didn't he? No, I found out that what that red nose means. I actually found out when you see a guy with a really red nose here, and it's got oh, no sunblock. He's uh, No, but it's also alcoholism. What, a gin blossom? Yeah, Paul. There's a band literally called the Gin Blossoms. I didn't Been around even know for a long that. time. Yeah, I know. I got oh, one. You don't even know what a fucking bridge is. You're going to know what the gin blossom is? <laughs> it's not significant, Bill. No, I got one for you. Ready? Is there anything worse than a bland slice of pizza? Dude, I went oh, to. When you bland bad food, so you are, you're paying for it with the calories, it doesn't even taste good. Dude, last night, my family's, my family's at the beach till next, you know, I, I see them in a few days. I had the night to myself. I was strolling through town and I said, you know what? I haven't had a slice and a soda in fucking three months. So let me go get a slice. And this place has big slices. So I get the slice. Oh, you can't go big slice. I know. You don't watch barstool sports. I know. It's one of the truest things Dave Portnoy ever said. It's true. Big it slices is true. usually bad. It is really true. Usually bad. So I get it. Comes out. I put a little bit of pepper flakes tiny little bit of pepper you know and i just dude you gotta just, grab everything just, just start. real quick like a little tiny of the garlic powder but it's got to be such a hint and i'm excited and i bit the first bite and i'm like ah you know what maybe once i get into the middle of this thing and dude i was lying to myself and i just i had a soda and a fucking piece of pizza to do what you said just cheat and have a fun thing walking back to my car shaking my head not worth it terrible a bad slice of pizza. You know when you said a bad slice of pizza, you know what I pictured afterwards walking in is that guy who doesn't know how to make pizza is throwing the dough up in the air. You just grab the dough, slam it down over him like that. You get your fucking money back. Because <laughs> uh, you can't yeah. break out to the dough, out of the dough in the fantasy. All right, guys, it's Cigars International. I love smoking cigars. I love a cigar. 
<laughs> uh, it helps me disconnect from the craziness of the world. Uh, <clears throat> I have a room in my house dedicated to smoking cigars. Yeah, it's the garage, okay? Whether you're working from home or you're just kicking back after um, a week, there's no better way to relax than with your favorite cigar. And Cigars International has the deals and selections to meet all your cigar needs. Cigar International is home to the largest humidor in America. All brands you know and love are available here. From the big top selling national brands to small boutique cigar makers, cigars from Nicaragua, the Dominican Republic, Honduras, Ecuador, the Bahamas, America, you name it, they've got it. Uh, they have great cigar deals from the daily cigar deal to weekly specials to their cigar of the month club. Uh, don't know where to start? Don't worry. Uh, they're the kings of making all-star sampler packs. Um, you know, just a variety of such great cigars uh, that lets you get a little taste of everything. They actually sent me something and I didn't even know you could get Aurora's not in those plastic uh, tubes. The one that you introduced me to, the Emerald, uh, yeah. they actually a regular paper wrapped one. And it was actually became one of my new favorite cigars. So um, I love those. Those are those are the best. And I, the cigar uh, sample pack. Also gives you a little flavor for all different things, so you could order those boxes individually. Um, right now, Cigars International is offering our listeners, our listeners, just us, the best podcast in the fucking world, just us, okay? A free BAO Flathead V660 Carb 5-Pack. Dude, that sounds like a fucking G5 engine. <laughs> um, for any <laughs> any order over fifty dollars, okay, uh, that website is cigars with the s international dot com and use promo code anything for the free cao flathead v six six zero carb five pack. Um, they're great tasting cigars, so make sure you do that and uh, use the promo code to get the deal from our podcast. Anything better. No. Dude, I saw an alligator get eaten by uh, an alligator eat a dog the other night on YouTube. Why? Why would you watch that, dude? I, I don't know. I just came up. You know, you watch something. This is what ends up happening. I watch an animal defeat so many fucking animals. I want to see something kill it. You know, like a praying mantis. It's just like Jesus Christ. This fucking asshole's like eating these birds' faces. Let me see somebody kill this fucking thing. Dude, that is such a you and, thing. And then somehow I end up uh, watch. I don't know what language they were speaking, but it was like a stray dog. The dog felt nothing, dude. It was just, it was over. Yeah, dude, I, I get creeped out, man. I get creeped out anytime, you know, reptiles or snakes or anything. Just, I don't like seeing the animal just can't move and not knowing. And then the other animal just fucking beat. Well, then you don't want to see an otter eat a snapping turtle. That's a bad uh, one. I don't, dude. I don't want to watch anything like that. The only thing that I and I I'll tell you right now, Paul, you don't want to watch an old lady runs into a grizzly bear uh, in her spare fridge in the garage. You don't want to watch that one either. I'll tell you what. You don't want a middle-aged woman to go near an Italian governor. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Dude. Oh, dude, what about that video I sent you? I was, oh. I woke my wife up. I was laughing so fucking hard. I just Googled, like, you know, after you see a dog get eaten by a fucking alligator, you know, you cleanse your palates. I need a little ginger here, right, for the next course. So I, I just Googled um, uh, drunk people falling down. Oh, my God. Dude, this guy goes into a convenience store, and it's like he's he, – the top half of his body, you can't believe he doesn't fall back on his head. It takes him, it was like he was on a ship on the high seas. He just couldn't get his footing. He gets into this aisle, pulls either a 12-pack or a sixer out of the uh, out of the freezer. And he goes down and Paul, I'm staying to fast forward the video. It took him like eight, eight legit minutes. No, it was to get up. Well, here, here, let me paint the picture from my perspective. I'm sitting on the couch watching a movie. I get a call. It's Bill. I answer the phone and he goes, dude, he goes, I got to just tell you this. My wife just yelled at me for laughing so hard. So I pause the movie 
And I'm like, all right, dude, how funny can this be? And I go, send me the video. And within two minutes, I was fucking, I was hysterical laughing, dude. I had tears in my eyes. What made, what was- I got to show how he was walking. He was fucking walking like this. He was just like, (laughs) and he's like trying to grab the handle. My favorite one, my favorite part was when he fell into the counter and his feet were still on the ground and his back was flush was laying down on the counter. This is, oh. and one other thing too, was it was like in broad daylight. Oh this my guy gosh. walked in like a convenience store. He was that hammered. And what I liked about him too was like his stick to First of all, how drunk he was, he, was, he still wasn't passing out. No, that's a he guy you wanted to- in there, like, never, never got me down, right? He never got me down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's who you want on your football team. But my favorite part of that was the convenience store employee, the old man looking at him and then finally realized he had a drunk guy on the floor in his drink section. And the guy like tried to do it. He tried to get up and like show that he was OK when he wasn't. And he dude, it was when he fell into the fucking the, the thing that made everything shake. <laughs> Oh, oh, and he, oh, then he goes out of view on the camera. And then you see this whole snack rack just start like there was an earthquake. You know, he fell into that thing. Dude, my son taking first his first steps was was more coordinated than this guy had been walking for decades. And the fact that he went in there to get more booze and he was so if you really look at him, he's like so eloquent, like he's trying to act like he's sober. Yeah, yeah. It's like he was getting pulled back in time. It looked like he was possessed by something at one point. <laughs> like it looked like it looked like somebody was moving his body. It was so fucking, but he never, dude, guys like that. I was just in Austin, and I'm not gonna mention the guy's name because the guy is great. But dude, I was talking to this guy. He's a promoter. He was fucking hammered and from eight o'clock at night he was drinking glasses of jameson this big and by one in the morning his eyes are going down but he's still in the convo and he would pop back up and he would get in the convo and even during dude even and the whole time i'm going this guy's gotta fucking end up sleeping this guy's gotta end up going down he's going the distance and he fucking <laughs> stayed up He fucking, you know, like he would throw a little thing in the conversation, but it was a mumble. So he'd be like, oh, yeah, because and everybody would just kind (laughs) of everybody would kind of just be like, oh, yeah, you know, we don't want to be rude, dude. The guy fucking hung on till everybody went home. He closed the place down. Eyes half down. The guy had a responsibility. Whether his blood alcohol is 0.0 or 2.9, he was getting that job done. That guy right there is why America is the greatest country out there. Vegas needs odds on guys like that. You're like, oh, Greg's starting at eight. Is he going down? How many rounds is he going? And each round is an hour. Dude, you can never do it with the liability. But if you could just get guys that fucking hammered and you could just sit there and bet on them. You could bet when is he going to fall? Yes. How long is it going to take him to get back up? Falling asleep is one. Falling asleep, you're out. Like that's the, uh, that's the, that's that's, passing out is getting knocked out first round of the playoffs. All right. What about puking? Not acceptable. Okay. So puking, you're out. Um, well, you know, there are those other like rock star level guys who puke and then continue to drink more. Like they just made, it's like an eating disorder with alcoholism combined. Dude, if you puke and then continue and then crack a beer, you're a fucking savage on another level, dude. Cause like once you puke, it's bedtime. All right. You know what? When we were in high school, my crew of guys that I drank with, the ultimate shame was if you puked. And you just sat there fucking holding it in and fucking hold. You just wouldn't puke. And then there was another crew, same fucking high school. Their shit, if you puked, they laughed and then they kept going. So I always respected them because they had the freedom to puke. It was almost like looking at women, like they can cry and everybody comforts them rather than being like, you fucking pussy, right? (laughs) They could like puke and everyone would laugh and they would like keep going. So we had one guy in our crew who was not only was he a puker, he had he 
had no idea that he was going to puke. He was like a fucking time bomb. He'd just be <laughs> sitting there at one time. <laughs> Dude, I remember one time he was in my buddy's car and he was sitting in the front seat. I was in the back seat and he was, we were driving down the highway at the end of the night. We were just sitting there and then just out of nowhere, dude, like the exorcist just went all over. Dude, it looked like Pulp Fiction when I just shot Johnny in the face. You know, his brains go all over the back of the window, except it was the inside of the front windshield. It was all puke. He had another one. We were walking out of Faneuil Hall, and uh, we were walking towards these glass doors because it was the winter time. Because usually it's it's outdoor seating, the, the glass doors. And dude, we were walking towards the doors. And when I'm telling you, this guy was like 5, 10, 15 feet away from the door. He was walking in front of me, and I'll <laughs> just see the door just bleh, like all over it. <laughs> all over it and like a whole group of people just went like all right i guess we're walking out this door and then we were walking in faneuil hall and he's talking to me and as he was talking he's like what's up bear man he's like your dad's coming your father's coming down to pick us i'm like yeah and then he would just turn his head in stride and it was like a lake of fucking <laughs> what it was un dude it was like the only other time I saw puking like that was Pat from Munaki. And I can't tell the story without gagging on the, the eggnog drinking contest. No, no, on don't. The late, don't. great Opie and Anthony show. It is one of the greatest pieces of comedy ever. Ever. Yeah, yeah, I do. Puking gets me sick, man. When people fucking, it's, I start gagging, dude. Oh, Paul, you never would, you never. You never would have made it. Like, dude, people see pictures of him when he finally puked, and they don't think it's real. It looks like something out of a comic book. You know, like he's turned, like uh, he's turning into a superhero in some weird way. Like he becomes a liquid. <laughs> oh, it was like that, dude. First of all, I've told this story a thousand times, but it needs to be told again. Every 30 seconds, you had to do a double shot of eggnog. Last person to puke wins. It was so simple, but so fucking brilliant. It's like when that comic comes out with the perfect joke, you're like, why didn't I think of that? That thing was just sitting there, and he went up and plucked it off the tree, and now he's doing it. Um, Yeah, dude, and this guy was the returning champion, and he was a diabetic and had lost a toe to the disease and proceeded to drink at least three-quarters of a gallon of eggnog in um you know less than an hour oh my god and i will spare all the puking stories along the way but everybody got a nickname there was the blair witch guy there was the terrorist there was one guy uh, i remember um who was it ari shafir was saying it sounded like he was it was like on a loop like a d made the exact same noise every time he puked and he rapped like like five times in a row and it sounded like the exact same audio wow. um there was that guy and then the end paul i could see your face nathaniel came up with the idea joe rogan <laughs> said the only thing that can top that is if somebody leans their head over the barrel opens their mouth and lets pat puke into their mouth uh. <coughs> dude it was called the baby bird yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no 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 so paul this guy <laughs> I'm going to get him. So no, this no. guy fucking puts his head like this and fucking Pat lets it go, Paul. It was like a bucket of paint, except it was eggnog. Ugh. You know, it was in his stomach too, Paul. So you know it was a little warm, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Dude. Uh. Ugh. <clears throat> All right, dude. So I got to tell you a story. Let's, let's, I got a story. So the uh, guy with his mouth open says, <laughs> I, I like if I actually tell that story in detail, I can't do it to this day, dude. And it is it is 16 years, 17 years later. I mean, not that, but 14 years later, I can't do it without gagging. If I watched that on YouTube, I would probably gag or throw up for sure. All right. Now, just imagine you were there, Paul. No, no, that would have fucked me up. I would have thrown up with them. I would have thrown up. I almost did. Yeah, I, I, I held it off all those years because the guys I drank with. 
I was able to hold it off. The baby so bird, know, look it up. Opie and Anthony show. So check this out. My stepfather was in the Navy and they had a oh, game. Oh, like this. Frame your face, man. Jesus Christ. You're blurry here. I'm, am I blurry? Not, not, you're not now. There you go. Oh, now you moved again. Now you're blurry. Um, here we go. There my he step, is. My stepfather was in the Navy and they did a, ga a game where they would, uh, with recruits, where they said that you couldn't, you, for you had a half hour. This is real shit, man. This is a great story, actually. A half hour. And they said, if you want to make money on friends, and I, I'm actually going to say this, I'm going to say this before I tell the story. Do not do this because people can die. So if you do this, it's irresponsible. People can die. Okay. I did not know that until I did it. And I'm competitive and I want to win. So let me just say that. But it was very dangerous. My stepfather says to me, you can't drink a gallon of water in a half hour without throwing up or peeing. It's impossible. You can't do it. Now, Navy guys. Yeah, don't ever do that. You'll no. fucking make your, your, your cells Navy. like disintegrate. You drown from the or some shit. Yeah. yeah. The so, they had a radio contest. A woman fucking died doing that. Yeah. So so uh, stupid me. I said I can do it. And usually I heard they do it with milk and guys throw up. But with water, it's incredibly hard. You got to time it perfectly. So a friend of mine tries doing it. And on the third on the fourth glass, he goes, Paul, you're an asshole. And he runs upstairs, just throwing up. Right. Then I had a guy at work go, you're so fucking stupid. Verzi. He put up a hundred bucks and he's drinking it. And all of a sudden you just see him going. And he, dude, he ran to the bathroom and on the way to the bathroom, his arms went out and his mouth came and it came out. Like, I swear to God, he looked like a fountain. He looked like a fountain. He's going, fuck you. Right. Swear to God. Yeah, yeah guys, I cannot tell you. Because I looked it up because I was surprised that you could, you know, I'm an idiot. No, I didn't know dude, that something happens where it gets crazy. Listen to this. Dude. Yeah, your cells like the wall of your cell just like disintegrates. I don't know what happens. So I'm going to shut up. I fucking sit down with my in my kitchen and I had friends there. My mom was there and everything. I said, I'm going to do it. And my stepfather goes, you can't do it. And I was so dumb. He goes, yeah, five bucks. And I'm in fucking high school. Fuck your five bucks. I'm doing it. I'm on the fourth glass. I'm, I'm okay. I'm breathing. I'm on the fifth glass. And now my stomach starts to get really distended. And I got like this much left in the whole gallon. And dude, at 28 minutes, I was on my last glass. And I waited for the last seconds. And I did it, dude. And my stomach was distended. And all of a sudden, everything started shaking like this. And I didn't feel right. And my body and back started to be weird. And my mother looked at my stepfather and he goes, if something fucking happens to him, I'm never going to forgive you, dude. And I started to fucking panic and my back started to hurt. And at about like 36 minutes, I'm in the bathroom trying to puke. And I was a guy that would drink. I can never really puke even when I got fucked up. That's why I was always had such bad hangovers. And uh, finally, dude, like 10 minutes later, I'm in the bathroom and it all starts coming up. But dude, when I tell you things were off with my body, my brain, everything just started to like vibrate and I fuck it. I did it. And my stepfather's like, I didn't think he's going to do it. I thought he would puke. And my mother's like, if anything happens to him, but um, I think most people are like me. They don't know that you can, you can die doing that. Don't ever listen, man. Don't ever do it from the anything better podcast to you. Do not try. You it. know, there's some competitive idiot that's yeah, going to do it. Cause you yeah. just said that you did it, Paul. You should have said I didn't do it. No, I was a competitive idiot and I fucking barely did it. And just luck with my timing, I got it done and I could have went to the hospital or died. So don't fucking do that. These fucking guys in the Navy, I heard they used to do it with milk, but which was just the consistency of it, how much thicker. So halfway through the gallon, I was just like, Whoa, you know, and like it became that. So then people tried doing it with water, but um, really, really fucking stupid. And um, it was just not fun after like when I did it, I'm like, yeah, I told you. And then things got weird, dude. So never do shit like that. All right. Never do shit like that. There you go, guys, you heard it from Paul Verzi. What else shouldn't they do, yeah. Paul? You, <laughs> One time I got a BB gun. My uncle said, I hey, I bet you can't shoot the bottom of your tongue with it. I said, fuck you and your five dollars, dude. I did it when I tell you. Uh, I couldn't yeah. sing fa la 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 during the holidays. Yeah, my I'm tongue a dummy. Felt weird. My head started shaking. <laughs> Do not do this thing that we already know you should not do. Uh, Joe, I don't know what you think you know. He's a good man.
What's that from? Reservoir Dogs. Oh, is that Harvey Cattell? Yeah. Yeah. That was Joe, a good Harvey. I don't know what you think you know. He's a good man. Dude, Harvey Cattell's got to be 80, no? Um, yeah, him and De Niro and all those guys. I mean, they, they kind of broke out in the early 70s. They were 30. That was like 50 years ago. So, I bet yeah. you Cartel. What is he? 82? 82. Wow. Harvey Cattell's 82, dude. God bless him. Great actor. Great fucking actor. Was he, he almost he, got he, me killed. He was the wolf. Asshole. He was the wolf. Yeah, he was the fixer. He was the uh, Mr. White. He did that movie. She, that's Smoke. all you had to say. He goes, are you called the wolf? <laughs> oh, dude, Harvey Keitel, man. Classic, dude. That that guy, 82, though, man. That must mean Pacino. Yeah, Pacino's 80. So it's crazy, man. All those guys. 77. Who uh, is? De Niro's 77. Wow, man. That's dude, that's an end of an era. I think Pesci's 80. Pesci's definitely 80. He knows Pacino's 81. Wow. What's Pesci? 82? 78. Okay. Oh, dude, man, that era, those guys, dude. I wish they could squeeze one more. I wish there was a story of like old. You they know. just did it. Well, Kill they the were, Irishman. Yeah, well, they, it wasn't old though. They they just they just use old. <laughs> just the Irishman. Kill the Irishman was that other one. Oh, what did I say? Kill the Irishman. Okay, yeah. Was Kill the Irishman? Old. Was Kill the Fire. Irishman good? No, I liked it. A lot of people didn't lie. I don't know what the fuck they wanted, but what the, I, I I liked it a lot, and I also loved that Joe Pesci got to wave goodbye to everybody. His no, character when he left the to Kill the Irishman. I thought. No, you're was- talking about another movie. Yeah, the Irishman was great. He, Kill the he, Irishman. The Irishman you liked, Bill. That was he said. There's a there's one called Kill the Irishman. It's another movie. I think it's with Walken, right? So is it with Walken? Um, yeah, Kill. Oh yeah, yeah. Ray Stevenson. Dude, dude you guys want to laugh? I'm in what, the house. Wait a minute. What what was the fucking Scorsese one? That was the Irishman. The Irish. The Irishman. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Pesci was fantastic in that. I didn't see Kill the Irishman, though. But, dude, you guys want to laugh? I'm in the house alone, and it's just me, my fucking dog, and my cat. And the kids and Stacy are on FaceTime. Yeah, good night. What's dad going to do? I got nothing to do. I just got off the road. I'm sitting on the couch, and I fucking put on this this fucking uh, – somebody was like, hey, dude, if th- that's a really good, like, scary movie, horror movie, but it's, like, also a thriller with a good story. Dude, I put this fucking horror movie on. I swear to God, but I'm not kidding. And I'm just watching it, dude. And the fucking cat jumped on the floor. And I go, I, 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 I fucking got up, dude. Listen, <laughs> dude, this is true. I fuck it. And as a grown man, I fucking paused it. I walked to every window in my house, made sure it was locked. I had that panic feeling like somebody was behind me. I locked every door and I was scared. Fucking shitless, dude. Watch I don't watch horror movies. Horror movies scare the shit out of me. I buy in every time. I don't, unless it's just so, it's so poorly done. But if there's anybody who knows how to build suspense, yes. yes, they got the right music going on. I'm on the edge of my seat. I fucking hate it. The whole movie, that, I can't relax. That's the that's the beauty of good horror movies. It's not when like the guy's walking slow and they're suspenseful, and then he get dude. This movie was a guy walking in the woods with a fucking ax. And when he caught you, it was just instant, unmerciful killing. And there was nothing, there was no bullshit, dude. And it, yeah, and, and, what, and what gets you is not the killing. That's the relief. Okay. She's dead or he's dead. Right. Good. Put him out of his misery. Yeah. When the, the ax hit the guy's head, I'm like, Oh, that was good effects, but it's hoping it's that the waiting. Like, yeah. Oh. Where is it? Wait, just, yeah, I'll be in the movie. I'm just like, just fucking kill the person already. Yeah, yeah. You don't. Can't you don't like. Oh, my son's crying. Shit. Uh, well, we're almost. Uh, we're actually. We're actually almost gonna wrap this puppy up. Anyways, Bill, are you going in the yeah. water? Are you going on a boat, Bill? Dude, I'm right near the fucking water. I'm gonna. I got a paddle boat. I'm going out on tomorrow. I'm swimming. I'm gonna swim a little. You know, parallel to to the. You know, I don't, I'm not an ocean guy, Paul, but I'm gonna get out there. I swear to God, if I get killed by a fucking shark. No, it's beautiful, man. 
That well, salt water is beautiful. That's not beautiful, Paul. It's a terrible death. No, no, no. But I'm saying jumping in the ocean is beautiful. I literally thing. go, if I get killed by a shark, you go, that's beautiful. <laughs> no, no, no. But she was so busy thinking about your experiences. <laughs> We're talking about scary movies. I saw Jaws when I was, you know, like in fifth grade. That's it. Over. Over. Done. When that little boy got fucked up on the, ra- on the raft and, like, you saw the fins, like, from behind him and then there was just blood... That was pretty fucking wild. Bro. Oh, and her mother. Her mother was such a great actress. She just had that fucking mom look about her. She looked like her kid just got eaten by a shark. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what, dude? Like, that's it. I got to be honest with you, though. Like, parenting, like, you don't have your kid go out and fucking far out. And the, the kid, if you watch the movie, the kid was far out on a raft. Paul Verzi blames mother. <laughs> No, my kids will never be that far. My kids will never be that fucking far in the ocean. Okay, if anybody's going to be that far boogie board, and it's going to be my fucking dumbass. But my kids are not going to be fucking fish food and go out. Every time I see Lucas try to push limits, I, I you know, I, it's not going to happen. It's not going to fucking happen. Someone's on the Dude, my kids stand on the beach. I get nervous. All I think is like, what if a tsunami's coming right now? Five hundred mile per hour fucking wave. Oh, dude, that's horrifying. Yeah, that's that's horrifying, dude. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to jinx anything, but that the usually ocean happens. just takes you. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm a pool guy, Paul. <laughs> you get me in a pool. You you fucking have a pool, Paul. You can't get me out of that fucking thing. A uh, pool, a nice pool is unreal. 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 Heated. You got a heated it's pool. You. Just sounded like Bill Cosby. It's you and <laughs> and this echo and the water. That's it. E. <laughs> it's not a pussy. You cannot say pussy fuck and pussy. Uh, yeah, yeah. You cannot say fuck. That's what he said to Eddie Murphy. You cannot say fuck. And then that motherfucker pussy. was doing. I would rather yeah. you say fuck than fucking dropping roofs into fucking women's drinks. Yeah, then tell me why he's free. Tell me why he's free, Paul. <laughs> Guy's walking around. He knows people. He knows. I was people. doing a bit about that, but people are just like, you know, thinking that that many was innocent. It's like, did you read the articles? I just read the big words and look at the picture. <laughs> Bill Cosby free. Dude, I told you. Fucking told you, dude. Paul, I swear to God. I swear to God, like, I don't know. I've only been here for a couple of days, but like, oh, you, I might have to get a place back here. You got the itch, Let's huh? get a small little fucking Cape house, dude. Little cottage. Cottage, dude. Go big, dude. Buy a fucking mansion with glass oh, fucking rooms oh, in the ocean. Oh, you want to retire when you're 65? You don't go big. Get that Michael Corleone house when he was looking out the window and Fredo got whacked. Get that yeah. shit and fucking look out on that's the fucking... In, uh, that's in the right outside of Reno. Lake Mead. No, but I'm saying buy the equivalent of that. I'll tell you this. I give you this for your fucking... Oh, whatever the hell he says. You goddamn Italians with your oily skin. <laughs> that guy talking to Michael Corleone like that. Oh, yeah, dude. That was, And you just... And the best was like watching Pacino's face take it. Like he just listened and you were just like, oh boy, everybody's dead. <laughs> everybody's yeah. dead. I love that. I love that. Don't let anything. I'll tell you what I love, Paul, is I'm fucking sick. Like I knew this was going to be a good vacation because I saw my dream pickup truck. If I was going to buy a new one, sitting right outside the house. A Ford F2. This was actually a 350, but an F250 regular cab. Not that extended, not that stupid crew cab. Just the one with the bench seat. You like this, driving down the fucking street. Four-wheel drive. Fucking cab lights up on top. Over. That's going to be me, Paul. It's yeah. Gonna be me. I know, Paul, you're a sedan guy. I'm a sedan no, no, guy, no, too. No, I, need, I need one truck, and I need a fucking sedan. That's it. Yeah, I need I want a sports car, a sedan, and I could and one nice big SUV. I'm big on the I want an car. RV. No, I like I'm a big I like a big SUV. I like a big Tahoe Suburban. One of those I fucking, fucking hate those things. Why? They you put the whole family in there, watch a movie. Uh, fucking things are stupid. They get like three feet to the gallon. It's 130 degrees out. 
They're going to make an electric one. They're making them. Well, it's over. It's a wrap. The scientists have been trying to warn us since the late 1950s. About what? What are you talking about? Global warming. Oh, but I'm t- but like I'm saying I could get a big truck electric. They're making them now. Get a big truck electric. You mean a big electric truck? Yeah. Fucking I like electric. how you say it, though. <laughs> hey, I'm Paul Verzi. You want to come down to Paul Verzi's also be able to get a big truck electric? You talk to me. <laughs> big truck electric. That's like a fucking album or a band. Big, tr- <laughs> big truck. Coming to the stage. Big truck electric. Oh, shit, dude. Yeah, I I love that you're on the East Coast and I love that you're loving it. But you know what? It might be. I just got some clams, some clam bellies with some French fries. I'm going to eat some Chinese food tonight. I'm going for the heart attack before I go back out to the West Coast eat drinking green juices. You need to start maybe, you know, in the next few years, start packing up out West and, you know, just give it a little salute. You had a nice run and then you come back home. Well, why, why are you wrapping up my career? I finally got on fucking Star Wars and I'm supposed to what, fucking what? pull up stakes. <laughs> what do you mean wrapping up your career? You don't need to be. See, you can... I had, you had a nice run. What do you mean I had a nice run? Like it's over? I meant, I meant you had a nice run in out west, you lunatic. I'm not talking about your career. You could fucking be in Boston. I don't know, Paul, a... Sometimes the way you say things, I think you're saying my career's over. <laughs> Listen, Paul, it, seriously, for five years, if I can move back here, get a big truck electric. And just... <laughs> I'm going to have a big truck electric. I want to have a big boat electric. Give a fuck. I'll get everything electric. Here's the thing. You want to stop global warming? Everybody drives a big truck electric. No more plastic water bottles. Let's start a let's start a car dealership outside. And you, uh, you know, you vacuum up the ocean. Outside we'll have a big sign that says big truck, big car electric. Come down. <laughs> Come hey, down. Are you big enough for our cars? <laughs> we're saving the environment and we're fucking taking care of your family. Okay, safety Big trucks, fuck. pretty ladies. <laughs> <laughs> They're duct taping us to the big truck electric. Hey, I, um, Andrew, I think we know the name of this episode, huh? I think we know the name of this episode. If this episode's not big truck electric, I don't know what fucking name for the episode. Um, is, are we, uh, I think we're good to go, man. I mean, Bill, you got your. You got your family over there. You're sitting on the water. I'm already oh, regretting I that I have to fight that. I got to I got to go back after these gigs. I want to stay out here for like a fucking you know, while. Having a good time, Paul. Deep yeah, places, yeah. Bill and Bob's fucking roast beef. Go over there to Wall Burgers. That wasn't around when I was here. Got to pay my respects, Paul. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I got to eat at all these places. Uh, um, all right, no. that's it. Yeah, that's it for episode. Uh, what a what a good, fun episode. This, I mean, it's just. Oh, is there anything better? Going. Is there anything better than sitting on the front porch, listening to the waves hitting the beach? Right. I mean, no. Smoking a fucking stick. See, you're starting to come around to the ocean. Away from like the house. That. Away from the house. That's my rule. Yeah, yeah. The things that don't like smoke s- in or around the house. So I have to get away from the house. But fuck, I got to talk like in casino, you know, if I fucking cigar like this. Dude, you want a good one? I'm telling you, do this. When nobody's around, when everybody's sleeping, just fucking go. You're by Italian. The- Don't take your dick out now. I've heard about you people. <laughs> no, no. I'm, yeah, I'm a dying. I'm not a pervert. Uh, walk, walking by the ocean or just looking at the ocean alone when everybody, like when the sun starts going down and you just reflect. You reflect on your life and you reflect on your blessings and you watch the ocean and you look at the fucking boats over right there. And you redeem yourself every time, Paul, every oh. time people go, I'm listening to a guy who drives over a fucking bridge every day in the Manhattan and doesn't even fucking big notice truck, big truck All electric, this, big truck electric. Paul Versey does not notice bridges, but has the presence of mind. To sit near an ocean by the cell and give thanks to a higher power for all of his blessings. I'm telling you, Paul. You, yeah. If you're a superhero, they call you the redeemer. Uh, and totally redeem yourself. Hey, Bill, real quick before we get out of here. Are the Yankees going to... You would to- show up after somebody fucked up. You got to give them a chance. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, I just looked up the lyrics because because my daughter listens to a different Spider Man song because she watches Spider Man now, and I'm but she watches the kid version. So I was like, oh, Spider Man, Spider Man. She's like, Dad, that's not how the song goes. So I actually looked up the lyrics, dude. There's kind of some shit talking in the one that I have. Is he tough? Listen, bud, he's got radioactive blood. It's like, hey, take it easy. I mean, how the fuck was I supposed to know that? <laughs> Listen, bud. I just love that that was in there. It was a kid show. Like they're yeah. grabbing me by my lapels that I don't have. Uh-oh, kids are coming upstairs. I got to run here, man. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, do you think the Yankees can uh, catch the Sox or no? Catch the Sox, dude. I think you and I can have a wiffle ball team and catch us. You know what happened? We were overachieving. Uh, we were overachieving. We were winning all these games. And then the fucking uh, the time to do something came around, and they didn't do shit. I think it killed the morale of the team. Dude, it's like watching a blooper reel. I was driving around, Paul, in the North End, looking for a spot to go to a little cigar bar right now, right? I got the socks on WEEI. I'm fucking, dude, I'm doing everything but plowing driveways. I'm so back in this fucking city, right? So I'm... Uh, I'm listening to the game. We're up, we're up fucking four to one. And I'm like, this is it. It's over, man. We got this fucking game, dude. Next thing you know, like they just keep, it's almost like the Red Sox right now to management is like, we're going to show you what we could do for the first six innings. And then we're just going to fucking tank it. Next thing you know, it's four to four. They scored four runs, Paul, in the top yeah. of the ninth inning. Yeah. Not only won the game, they ended up kicking our fucking ass. Well, we're both chasing the Rays, but dude. Did you see the guy Nestor, the guy who looks like a 1988 baseball card on the Yankees? He's got that dark mustache right here, and he's a pitcher, and he was going against Otani, and he was joking with him, and he was like, am I going to throw it? Am I going to throw it? And then he does a quick one, and then he does something else, and Otani and them are just laughing because he knows he can't strike them out, so he was throwing real slow. He was, like, doing all kinds of stuff. You got to watch it. It's actually oh, – Oh, because you ran out of pitches? No, no, no. He's a pitcher, but he's like a minor league journeyman. And oh, we okay. called him up, and he's got this dark 1988 mustache. He looks Tell like me a, that clip. Yeah, dude. And he's like kind of joking with the guy, and he's doing with his leg is going up and down. And then he like throws like slow. Then he tries to throw real quick when he can't pay attention. And everyone's going. And the What's hitter was laughing. Uh, the hitter was laughing. The ump was like, "Dude, what are we doing here?" It literally looked like a kid in a backyard. It was one of the funniest things ever. You got to check it out. It was. Oh, who's that guy in, on the Dodgers? When he struck that guy out and the guy was complaining and he's walking off the field and he looks at the player and he just goes like, <laughs> like that crying face. I wouldn't have known it, but they, they've made like murals of it out in L.A. It's hilarious. Bill he just Kelly. called the guy, huh? Bill Kelly, he used to play for the Sox. Oh, dude, funniest shit ever. Uh, I love baseball, man. Yeah, he was doing like that and everything. Andrew was just saying. Um, well, we got I like that the mullet's back. How great is it that the mullet's back? Ah, I mean, I can't. I'm not a mullet guy, dude. It's it was. You got bad. a fucking chain, fucking down to your dick, hanging out of your t-shirt. You're not a mullet guy. What? Because you can't grow. You could grow one, Paul. No. Dude, you look like a young Ben Franklin. <laughs> Meets Michael Corleone. You got to do it. Go outside, fly a kite with a little fucking cannoli on the string. Come on, Paul. Oh, uh, it's great. How about uh, how about football coming back, Bill? We got th four weeks, buddy. Four weeks. Saquon's back. I'm excited. We're gonna do NFL picks every week. All that stuff, guys. So college football. The whole college thing. Football. Dude, college right now is the time, though, to listen to baseball. Dog days of fucking baseball is hilarious. The shit they talk about. This guy was yeah, talking yeah. about the disease his dad died of. And I was just like, what the heck? Is this like a fucking rain delay? Like, how does that come up? Jesus. Well, there's just nothing to talk about. We're in this skid. We're in this fucking slide. And God forbid they change a pitcher. The guy's got to have like 36 warm-up pitches, and these guys are just sitting there. Yeah, you ever uh, you have a job uh, taking barnacles off the bottom of a boat? <laughs> this, is, this is my least favorite time in sports. My favorite time in sports, September, October, is when everything goes. And well, why don't you sit next to the radio and reflect on how lucky you are to be a sports fan? Is anything better than being a sports fan in the United States of America? Oh, is anything With better the than... four best sports, one of us donated by Canada – Respect to them. Yeah, I got the only honest. one, the only sport where you can't be some big talking guy. Everybody in the sport, they got the big talking guy who can't really fucking fight. In hockey, you find out. This the is my new move. You go out, you find out. And then I throw the fucking cellophane. There it is. That's a good one. 
the thought of sitting on my couch watching my New York football giants every Sunday coming up soon gives me pleasure. Is there anything better? Why do you say New York football giants? You tell me why. I'm going to tell you why, because there was uh, the baseball team in New York. And I said to my oh, wife, Jersey. I said to my wife once, I go, you know, they're called the New York football giants, right? And she goes, no, they're not. I go, she thought I was fucking with her. I go, no, no, they're actually the New York football giants. They're not called that. They were called that when the giants were there. There's no reason to do it. Chris Berman brought it back. Well, they still do it now, though. And huh? and what if you were they talking do it because about of Chris, they're quoting Chris Berman, who was quoting them. I, I don't know about that. Here's why. Because if you refer back to the New York Giants of baseball, if you talk about like Mays and all that, it'll get confusing. So you so it makes sense. There's a sliver of that. I don't like how you just said that thing. There was an awkward silence, and then you did this little move, like, <laughs> like, like it just, you know, Ken Harrison put it on the board. Yes. You know what? I'll give it. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Uh, what the fuck was that move? I want to see that as a fucking meme. What? Whatever the fuck you just did, that little, I just made a point. <laughs> that was your, you were, uh, were you, you talking to the person at the scoreboard? Is that what I that was? Went, I just, I just went. Yeah. <laughs> you know who does oh, that shit? You got to see the LA weatherman. There's a guy out there, man. He fucking dresses up like, you know, he's going to host a telethon. Oh, dude. He goes, I'll tell you right now, the whole state's on fire. I'll give you the news right in a few minutes. And he's like, fucking, <laughs> no, dude, like talk to an old. Talk to an old black man in the South. Nothing funnier. When you talk to an old black man in the South, they make a point and immediately agree with themselves, dude. This dude, this dude, Andre from Alabama, he was the he's the sound guy at Brad Garrett's room at the MGM Grand. And for some reason, he took this insane liking to me. Like he just loved me. He was like, dude, can I let's go out and talk sports? He loved to bet. And he was just Southern, right? Like, and he, and he, he, he told me. He sees you come in with your bald head and your chain hanging down. Like, all right, this guy's got a problem. I'm hanging dude, out with him. He fucking loved me. Like he was like, Paul's coming. Dude, people would go to Vegas and go, dude, Andre keeps talking about you. Like this guy. But I want to hear him. How does he, how does he do the thing? Let me hear it. He would do, he would go like this. <laughs> he would go like this. You'd say a point of agreement. So he goes, I'll tell you why, man. I'll tell you why. He goes, because they don't have a defense and their running game is suspect. Uh huh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he would say, uh huh. That's right. Or like, you know that? Like, and I didn't even say anything. And he was just like, it's a Southern thing. Like, when that was like, that's their version of that. <laughs> That's their version of that. Like, I'll tell you, I like both. I like yours better. Because <laughs> I was trying to think of a rebuttal, and you did that move, and it just, whatever my comment was, it was over. You just cleared my head. Uh, all right, guys. This has been episode 28, Anything Better. Please like, subscribe, get it everywhere. I will be, Bill, I know, all, I know your shows are sold out, okay? I'm trying to fucking sell out these shows. I will be at the uh, Salt Lake City Wise Guys, uh, September 3rd and 4th. I'll be at Governor's on the 27th of August. A lot of anal sex in that 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 state. No, they're just Italian. No, no. Uh, so no, because the chicks want to stay virgins, so they were just like you know because of that uh, that polygamy religion out there or something. Well, I haven't been to Utah in a while. There was something out there, so they wouldn't have vaginal sex. Well, there you go, fellas. Throw it in her ass. You know what I mean? There you go. Get to, get to throw you know. it in her ass and then and then whatever. Um, also, uh, my special, guys. My special. This is September 18th. <laughs> Levity Live. <laughs> I'll be there the weekend before. I'll be in Philly September 15th. And the Wilbur Theater right near where... Uh, Philly, home of the, 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 uh, the chicken fried steak sandwich. They're so famous for that. What, what, you go to Philly, you got to get a chicken fried steak sandwich. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm fucking with you, dude. That's all they ever told you. Give, give, give me two wit. Give me two without. <laughs> Wilbur Theater. October. Anything 22nd. else going on in that city, Paul? Uh, in Philly? Well, if they come here, they don't tell you how to order a bowl of fucking clam chowder. Oh, dude, I got a guy mad at me once. I went to Jimmy's and I go, yeah, can I get a Philly cheesesteak? And he just goes... Oh. I was like, I, I don't, I'm sorry. Like, I don't, like, I'm dude, they're like Parisians. <laughs> you try to speak French. Like, oh, God. It's like, yeah, but dude, I got to listen to your English. 
Go to the meat store. Yeah, it's like it's fucking beef and bread. Put it in the fucking bread and give me the sandwich, you fucking asshole. I don't give a fuck how to say that's it. All, yeah, that's all. They, but they do that with. But I don't think that everybody in Philly does that because for the longest time, whenever they would show a fucking Patriots game, <laughs> they used to show some stupid lighthouse before Gillette put up a fake one. And they'd always show like the autumn leaves in this fucking lighthouse. And me and my buddy, after 30 fucking years before they ripped down Sullivan Stadium, they finally showed the lighthouse. I'm like, dude, where the, have you ever seen that lighthouse? Like, where the fuck is that thing? That's so funny. Um, all right, guys. Well, this has been the show. Until or go to all of Verzi Effect, Monday morning podcast, you, YouTube, all that shit. Get dates, paulverzi.com. Well, if Bill has tickets anywhere available, go to that. Andrew Themis, I love you. Bill, I love you. Tell everybody over there, give my regards, and just know that this is the best podcast out there right now, and you guys have said it. And let's go Red Sox. Take care.